This is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin from his book, The Human Phenomenon, from the part titled The Evolution of Matter. Physics was born in the last century under the double sign of fixity and geometry. Its youthful ideal was to find a mathematical explanation for a world conceived of as a system of stable elements in a closed equilibrium. And then, along with all the sciences of the real, it was irresistibly drawn by its own progress into becoming a history. Today, positive knowledge of things is identified with study of their development. Further along in the chapter on thought, we will be describing and interpreting the vital revolution brought about in human consciousness by the wholly modern discovery of duration. We only need to ask ourselves here how the introduction of this new dimension expands our view of matter. The change brought about in our experience by what we shall soon call space-time essentially consists in this. Everything that we regard and treated until then as points in our cosmological constructions has become the momentary section of indefinite temporal fibers. From then on, to our opened eyes, every element of things prolongs itself behind us and tends to continue on ahead as far as the eye can see, so that the whole immensity of space is no more than the slice, at time t, of a trunk whose roots plunge down into the abyss of an unfathomable past, and whose branches rise somewhere ahead into a future that, at first sight, seems boundless. From this new perspective, the world appears to be a mass in process of transformation. The totem and quantum of the universe tend to express and define themselves in a cosmogenesis. In the eyes of the physicists at this moment, what form does this evolution of matter take, qualitatively, and what rules does it follow, quantitatively? A. Form. Observed in its central and clearest part, the evolution of matter reduces itself, in current theory, to the gradual building up by increasing complication of the various elements recognized by physical chemistry. At the very bottom, to begin with, there is a still unresolved simplicity, a kind of luminosity indefinable in terms of figures. Then, abruptly, a swarm of positive and negative elementary corpuscles, protons, neutrons, electrons, photons, the list of which never stops growing. Then the harmonic series of simple bodies spread over the notes of the atomic scale from hydrogen to uranium. And next the immense variety of compound bodies, where molecular masses continue to rise until they reach a certain critical value, above which, as we shall see, we go on to life. There is not a single term in this long series that, from valid experimental proofs, cannot be seen to be composed of nuclei and electrons. This fundamental discovery that all bodies derive by arrangement from one initial corpuscular type is the flash that lights up the history of the universe for our eyes. From the beginning, matter has in its own way obeyed the great biological law of complexification, a law we shall return to again and again. In its own way, as I said, because at the stage of the atom, many points in the history of the world still elude us. First of all, to rise up in the series of simple bodies, do the elements have to pass through all the degrees of the scale successively from the simplest to the most complicated, by a kind of onto or phylogenesis? Or else, 
do the atomic numbers only represent a rhythmic series of states of equilibrium, kinds of fixed compartments into which nuclei and electrons fall abruptly assembled? And then, in either case, are we to picture the different combinations of nuclei to be immediately and equally possible? Or else are we to imagine the contrary that, statistically, on the whole, heavy atoms appear only after light atoms and in a definite order. It does not seem as yet that science can give any definite answer to these and other similar questions. At the present time, we are better informed about the evolution of pre-living and living molecules than about the rising evolution of atoms. Note, I do not call it disintegration. The fact remains, meanwhile, and this is the only really important point for the subject we are concerned with here, that as far back as its most distant formations, we discover that matter is in a state of genesis, a genesis that allows us to catch sight of two of the aspects most characteristic of it in its subsequent periods. First of all, that matter begins with a critical phase, the phase of granulation, which abruptly gives birth, once and for all, to the constituents of the atom, and perhaps to the atom itself, and next, that, at least from the molecules onward, it pursues its course additively according to a process of growing complexity, 